I'll do this first one. Okay. A million years ago, um, we started this thing with Tumblr. We um, have a fairly popular Tumblr. Um, you go to interpret.tumblr.com. And then like part shortage in these um, key caps didn't come in, but we finally got them. They were coming soon. They're in now. Um, I really like Tumblr as a company. It's owned by Automatic, which is WordPress. I think they're doing a lot of amazing stuff with open source and doing smart things by their users. And uh, just like them, I love independent blogging and, and people being able to have a place on the web for their own content. So this is a Tumblr key. Um, I just dropped them a note. I'm like, hey, remember we were going to do this thing you know, a year ago? So if you like Tumblr and you want a custom key cap, this is just a very limited, fun promo thing that we were doing. So do check it out next up. Okay, next up, we've got some 5-volt LED strip. That's a kind of like a neon -y strip. I can also show this on the overhead. I'll talk about both these and I'll show them both off at the same time. So there's uh, natural white and also pink. Uh, so we have similar strip. You might be like, these look exactly like other strips you have. Yeah, but these are 5-volt strips, which is quite nice because uh, the other ones are 12-volt and maybe you don't have a 12-volt power supply handy. So these are a lot easier to control for most microcontroller projects that might be powered from USB. Uh, they are single color and their whole thing lights up at once. So you can PWM them if you have a big transistor, but uh, you know it's not like they're individually addressable. Um, they have about like 500, 350 LEDs per meter um, from more than a few inches away. Basically, the color is smooth. If you're like looking right up close, you do you can't see the little uh, hot spots between LEDs. But um, let me show them on the overhead. And just give me one moment. Set up my demo live demo that's my live demo song okay okay so this is oh so bright uh this is it at five volts so maybe i'll try to dim it to three volts okay it's a little dimmer but still um so it's pink it's pretty solid um, I'll say that, you know, if you're up close, you can kind of see, um, the LEDs individually, but because there's a nice, um, silicone covering over the LEDs, um, more than a few inches away, it's basically like one smooth color and I kind of love pink. And then this is the, uh, natural white. It's 4,000 degrees Kelvin temperature. One second, this one. That was that one. That was that. The video that is plugging in this one. Go to now. Okay, hold on. Get this nice and set. So this one is like a nice natural white. I'm kind of holding the wires by hand, just why it's flickering. Hold on. Okay. Normally it doesn't flicker. A nice natural white color. Um, both of these, again, you drive them from, you know, basically three to five volts and they'll draw between like, uh, 250 to, uh, one and a quarter amps. Alrighty. Next up. Um, it's a UPDI friend. Yay. UPDI friend. Everybody's favorite buddy when it comes to programming AT Tiny AVRs. So modern AVR chips, uh, the latest AT Tiny chips, use a new programming interface called UPDI, which is basically a synchronous one wire UART, um, which means it's much easier to wire up and manage than SPI with a separate reset line. Um, but you do need to have a little bit of specialized hardware to interface with it. And so that's what this is. Um, it's based off of an open source design that I saw by Stephen Wagner. Uh, he did such a good job. I was like, I want to make this and sell it because I want to use uh, this when I'm programming these chips. So um, if we go to the overhead one, yeah. So it's got USB type C and a CH3340E USB serial converter, which works perfectly fine. I've used it up to 200 uh, kilobit per second. It's got a power LED and you can select between three or five volt logic and power. Um, the power comes from either a 500 milliamp uh, LDO regulator for three volts or from USB for five volts. So you can actually like use it to really power chips. There's also a little TX LED that will blink red when data is being transmitted. And there's a 1K resistor between the RX and TX lines. Um, basically, I use this every day when I'm programming AT Tiny chips, um, especially since I'm shipping it with a USB, sorry, a, a JSTSH cable. So the cable you see here comes with it, it plugs into the little connector, and it gives you the power red, ground, black, and data line white. 
so that I can plug it into a breadboard so easily. Uh, like you can see here, and it powers the project as well as lets me do my uh, programming. And in theory, I can also do debugging, although to be honest, I've only used it for programming. All right, um, next up, the start of the show, so you, Lady, to our team, our customers, our community, and everything that makes open source go is da, 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 the can BFF. Yeah. Which is you're like, why is the code can BFF? That all makes sense. Because of the can BFF. So we've had a couple can boards. Uh people like to use CAN bus because it's uh, you know, very durable, reliable, um, fairly high speed interface. It allows you to connect multiple microcontrollers together on two lines. Um, and it's, uh, it's just been used for decades, so it's like well established, uh, but to use it, you do need to have, because it's differential, you need to have a chip with a transceiver. Uh, so this is the MCP 25625, which is really known as the MCP 2515. It's like they took that chip and a transceiver and put it into one small chip and they gave it a new name, but all the drivers you can use are the MCP 2515. It is, as far as software is concerned, exactly the same chip. Uh, and what's nice is it's very compact, and so I could toss it onto um, a board uh, that is the same size as a Cutie Pie or Shao, uh, which is lovely because a lot of people have been asking, hey, I want to take these little boards and make little can sensors or transceivers. Uh, so I have a little demo here that I'm going to show off. So back this up. Let's see. Defocus. Okay. So over here, I've got a uh, a Cutie Pie with a CAN BFF, and then I've got this CAN bus cable going over here, and this is going to a um, Feather CAN board. So this is the CAN. This one has a terminal block, and this one has a, a JST connector. And then uh, when the rotary encoder is twisted. That signal is sent from the feather over the canvas to the cutie pie. And it says like, yeah, I got the data and it's like nice and fast. And you can even have an interrupt pin if you want. Um, this is just it receiving, you know, a basic three byte message over can and uh, displaying it on the OLED. And this will be part of the demo code that uh, we put on the, the guide because people always ask us the demo code. Um, but it's just extremely nice and compact. Here I've soldered it with sockets, but if you want it even smaller, you can solder it directly on. Uh, it'll work with any uh, Cutie Pie or Shao board because it only uses the SPI pins plus chip select. Uh, I know that there are some Cutie Pie or Shao boards that use like the ESP32 series and that has native ESP, uh, sorry, native CAN, but then you need a transceiver anyways. I wanted something that worked with every chip possible. So that's why I went with the uh, SPI interface. We've got CircuitPython and Arduino library code for uh, that chip, and it works really wonderfully well. All right. And with that is new product. New, 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 new,